This video is going to be about circuits and the basic notation we use to describe them. A circuit is a path along which an electrical current can be carried. That's the definition. So if we say circuits, that's what we are talking about. I'm going to have you take a moment to copy down these definitions. Just pause the video because these are very in-depth, but these are the basic building blocks of a circuit. Specifically, batteries, wires, and resistors are what we're going to be worried about in this video. So a common misconception students have coming into class is that batteries give electrons to a circuit. You may remember that current is actually the movement of electrons. And what students imagine happening is that there's no electrons in a circuit or just the natural electrons of the metal, but all the electrons in the current come from the battery. Like the battery contains the electrons. And when it's plugged into a circuit, um, the electrons are moving around the circuit in a current. But what actually happens is that electrons already exist in the metallic material that makes up the circuit. And the battery just pushes the electrons that are already in the wire along the circuit. So as an example here, I have an incomplete circuit. It has a hole in it. And so the electrons can't move right now. But when I introduce a battery, the battery begins to push the electrons around. It gives the electrons voltage, potential energy, and they begin to move around the circuit like this. So that's a common misconception to watch out for. And if I remove the battery, you can see that the electrons stop moving. So the reason why the battery is able to push electrons is that the electrons are repulsed from each other. The battery provides a voltage that adds energy to the electrons, which allows them to push the electrons in front of them. If this path of electrons being pushed by the voltage continues all the way back to the same voltage source, this pattern continues and the voltage can keep electrons moving around the circuit. So by the time they get back to the battery, there's no more electrical potential, but when they move across the voltage, there's lots of electrical potential. So the battery is basically the thing that's pushing them along. It's accelerating the electrons electrons inside of itself to push other electrons forward. For the circuit to work, there needs to be a path all the way from one end of the battery back to the other. If that path is broken, all the electrons stop moving and the circuit does not work. We call circuits that have a complete path back to the battery closed circuits, and circuits without paths back to the battery open circuits. So basically the air between the wires kind of provides a wall in an open circuit that electrons can't pass through. There's just too much resistance for them to move through it. And just remember the direction of conventional current is the opposite of the actual direction of the electrons. From now on, I'm going to be using these arrows to show the direction of the conventional current. So even though the electrons here are moving counterclockwise, the conventional current points in the direction that these imaginary positive charges would move. It points in the opposite direction of the real flow of the electrons. Conventional current flows away from the positive end of the battery and toward the negative end. Just remember that that larger side is considered to be positive and the smaller side is considered to be negative. And of course, what's actually happening here is that the electrons are actually attracted to the positive end and repulsed from the negative end. So the electrons are actually going the other way around the circuit. But because this shows the conventional current, it goes from positive to negative. If there's more than one path back to the battery, the current will split in two and take both paths. We'll learn how to find the exact amount of current that follows each path later in this unit. So what would happen in this circuit is that current would come out of the positive end, and this is the total current moving in the circuit. And right here, it would split into two smaller currents. We can call this I2 and I1. And they'll continue to go, but those two together will add up to the total current. It's kind of like a split in a river, which we'll talk about later. So I1 plus I2 will equal the total current. And again, what's happening here is that the electrons are actually just splitting up and moving in different directions. So before that had a total charge of two electrons. And now in this particular case, each individual current has a charge of one electron moving through it. So those currents can continue until they meet up again and connect back into a single overall current. So right here, it would become a total overall current again. So those individual currents add together to make the total current moving through the battery. If a split in the circuit does not lead back to the battery, no current will flow into that split. And this is not because there aren't electrons in that part of the circuit, it's because the electrons in that part cannot be pushed through the resistance in the open part of the path. So what's actually happening here is that the electrons just can't be pushed through that one path, so the only place they flow is in that closed part of the circuit. Circuits always include at least one resistor. In a resistor, the electrons lose some of the energy that they're gaining from the battery in the process of pushing through the resistance. The total voltage lost by the current in the circuit is equal to the voltage added by the battery. So every time the current moves through a resistor, it's going to lose some voltage. It's going to lose some electric potential. And the total that it loses in all the resistors together will be equal to the total voltage gained by the battery. So any energy that the battery gives the electrons is going to be lost in the resistors and then the process kind of repeats. The electrons with no energy go back to the voltage source, and the process repeats itself. 
So here, because this is a current going through resistor one, I would label this voltage drop one. It's losing that much voltage as it moves through that resistor. To explain this, I'm gonna use an analogy that I came up with that I'm gonna call the water analogy, where I'm going to compare this circuit to water moving around a machine. So I'm going to imagine that this water moving in this machine is similar to the circuit, and I'm gonna use this analogy to explain why they are similar to each other. So I know that there's current flowing all around the circuit, which is one reason why I'm using the water analogy, because we also use the word current to describe water. And the battery is adding potential to the electrons. It's adding electric potential or voltage to the electrons. So the total amount that the battery adds is equal to the total electric potential that the electrons will have. And right after leaving the machine, in this case the battery, the current has the maximum electrical potential that it will have, the maximum voltage that it will have. In the same way, I can imagine that there's current flowing all around here as water. And at this point right here, I'm imagining that some machine is physically raising the water so that we can do work with it later. So at that one point, a machine is physically raising water to the top of this machine. And I can see that this total height is gonna be kind of equivalent to the total potential that the water gains as it's being lifted by this machine. And right after leaving the machine, the current has the maximum potential. In this case, that potential is gravitational potential. And I can see that, yeah, this is where the water has the most potential because it's raised that entire height. It's just left the machine that raises it higher. So just like we have this machine raising water, the battery kind of raises the electric potential of the electrons. And right after they leave the battery, they're at some maximum electric potential. So what happens next is that the current uses some of its potential to move through a resistance. So we can say that it drops by V1 here, V2 here, and V3 here. So those are three different potentials that it lost in each resistor. And altogether, the total voltage is gonna be equal to the sum of those three potentials. And here, right after it goes through all the resistors in the circuit, the current has lost all its potential. It's still being pushed by the current before it back to the machine to give it more potential. So in the same way, after gaining all that height, we can imagine that this water drops some of its potential to turn these machines. I'm not sure what they're doing. I'm just imagining that in order to make them turn, the water has to be moving with some velocity that it gains by falling a certain amount. So the water is losing some of its potential to make these machines work. And you can see that if you add up all three of those heights, all three of the potentials that are lost to those machines, those three potentials added together will be equal to the total potential added by the battery. So that's kind of what's happening here. The battery adds potential and each resistor takes away potential until there's none left at the bottom. So here the current has lost all its potential. It's still being pushed by the current before it back to the machine to give it more potential and start the process again. So that's the basics of how a circuit works. In a circuit, a battery provides electric potential or voltage. Current moves through the circuit with that potential and it loses that potential as it goes through each resistor doing some work in the resistor until it has no potential left and it comes back to the battery to be given that same amount of potential again and that process repeats. So we're gonna be doing a lot with circuits but that's the basic physical idea of what's actually going on inside of them.